Unconventional parenting is parenting outside of conventional systems, school, doctors and hospitals. It's child-led and respects children's autonomy. So all of my children have been um, full-term breastfed. We don't have any strict rules around bedtimes, meal times. They get to choose what they want to do. Do you enjoy learning? I do want to get to write him when I'm probably like seven or eight years that old. Does any of your family judge you or your lifestyle choices? Do you want to go first? <laughs> oh, you go first. Hello there. Welcome Hi. to our humble home. <laughs> Come on in. My name's Matt. And my name's Adele. And we are the Unconventional Parents. So unconventional parenting is parenting outside of the conventional systems of school and um, doctors and hospitals. It's an alternative approach that's child-led and respects children's autonomy. So there's Ulysses, who is 11. It's his decision not to take part in the filming today <laughs> directly is, is his autonomy, him saying what he does and doesn't want to do, and us having to respect that. A star is six, going on seven. And Kai is three, going on four. Hey, star, what, so what age did you start sleeping in your room by yourself? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like about five. Yeah, it was around five, yeah. Four and five, five. And where were you sleeping and, before then? Uh, well, before I got my bed, I was sleeping with my mum. My eldest child, Ulysses, um, he's probably been the most dependent for the longest. He pretty much co-slept till 10 going on 11. Mm. Stara, the middle child, she's going on seven and she was pretty much ready to go as soon as she got her own room and own bunk bed. Kai, when I said I'm on your pumpkins, mm. this is my pumpkins. They're not grown yet, I don't think so. Yeah. That's it? The final child, Kai, well, she's three and a half and I, I don't think she's going to stop co-sleeping co anytime soon. So all of my children have been full-term breastfed, which means that they, they wean naturally when they're ready. Breastfeeding is Mother Nature's immunisation. It contains all of your antibodies passed on to them. Uh, Ulysses was five going on six when he um, stopped breastfeeding. Astara was around four years old and Kai is still breastfeeding at three and a half years old. Did it! Hey, you didn't even crash into the radiator! A standard day um, very much involves the children listening to their bodily cues. They will sleep when they're tired, they will eat when they're hungry. We don't have any strict rules around bedtimes, meal times, no strict rules around screen times. They get to choose what they want to do. I always watch a program while I'm eating. Yeah, I just like eating with my hands. Matt, do you ever let the, um, the kids have like, junk food? Oh, mate, they love their junk food. I can't lie, I'd love to say they were clean and green, but there's crisps. There's chocolate um, and uh, pizza and all of that sort of jazz. When you do take the reins off and, and, and little star baby will be the first one. In fact, if you ask her, she'll turn around and she'll say cookies or something like that as, as her favorite food. I remember this funny moment where I was like, you know, cookies, man, they're, they're not gonna, they're not the best thing for you, buddy. And then her friends were like, well, how come you're so tall and strong? And she went, cookies must be making me tall and strong. And I was just like, oh, fine, an uphill battle here. I'm not getting through. So again, it's, it's not about telling a person don't do that because it's this. It's more giving them options and choices and just making them aware of the playing field. The main um, parenting philosophies that I think have influenced me is um, attachment parenting, especially for, for the young infants. Um, and then also the gentle parenting method, which is not about no discipline, it's about um, setting boundaries with kindness, firmness, and without hurting a child. So unschooling is home education, but it is not homeschooling. It's not taking a school curriculum into the home and sitting down and doing worksheets. 
The key dis difference is, is the, the child leads the way they learn and what they learn. So unschooling can very much look like just living in the real world. So this is, this is our garden, or more really a farm. We have um, a whole flock of chickens with roosters and uh, a little chick at the moment as well. Some bunnies back there. Being outside in nature is, is a huge part of, of their learning and exploration. We spend lots of time up at the, the uh, allotments and the community allotments, so they get to learn lots. Um, you know, whether it's about beekeeping or um, Matt does a lot of woodwork with them um, and they're just, yeah, they're really exposed to, to a big variety of things in, in everyday life. Do you enjoy learning? Yeah. What do you enjoy learning most? Well, I actually like do, doing gymnastics. I like learning gymnastics. I like gymnastics. What about all of the, the reading and, the, and science and things like that? Do you enjoy that? Well, I'm not really in a science person, but I, I do want to get to write him when I'm probably like seven or eight years old. Do you think you would want to go to school ever? I kind of already am going to school. I go, I go to classes, like gymnastics class and ballet class. We do not worry about them not being in school. Yeah. I'm... I would worry about what they were missing out on if they were in school, actually, the complete opposite. Mm. A conventional education, I'd say, is definitely failing a large majority of children right now. So to then, you know, go and accuse someone that opts for a different way to be irresponsible is, is ironic to me. Does any of your family um, sort of judge you, would you say, for your lifestyle choices. Do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> you go first. The irony would be... Not judge. Um, more, I think, they could be triggered by well, some of the well, choices. Well, this is where the irony, the irony would be is, is that they would actually feel that we're the ones judging them. Also, the, the vaccines and the, the choice oh, of medicine, right. yeah, that, that one riles people up the wrong way because they assume neglect and, and that you would never use a hospital in an emergency or anything like that. Our approach to medicine is definitely alternative. Herbal teas um, and extracts, um, anything directly from the plant, holistic, um, without side effects. It's not that we'd never ever revert to modern medicine, but it's a, a last resort rather than a first, and it's very rare. So valerian growing in here, which is for insomnia or um, anything really sleep related, and for COVID specific, you've got pine needle tea over here, but we won't go into that. We won't go into that. We'll keep that one at bay. Our children that have never been vaccinated, after doing the research I've done, I'm all about pro-choice. I believe if, if, you, if mm. you want vaccines, you should go and take vaccines. Mm. But if your vaccine works so well, you shouldn't require others to it's get perfect. them. I have no expectations of how the kids are going to want to live when, as when they grow up, it's their choice. I would just say to anyone that feels the need to judge is perhaps try and, you know, walk a few miles in someone's shoes before you, you take judgment over their lifestyle. I would definitely recommend people to try other ways of, of living, see where it takes you, you'll be amazed.